Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining our, our presentation session this morning. We're going to look at three primary items, the 2024 Mission Center calendar, and then the youth camping uh, program goals, and an overview of communication tools. But we also have uh, time just to ask questions as we go through these or uh, at the end, if you have other questions about conference actions or anything else related to the Mission Center or the field, uh, we have staff here and our Apostle uh, Mackay is here and uh, field support ministers online. So we'll open up at the end for other questions as well. For those of you who are in person, there are handouts of the calendar and um, one item on there for spring conference because it's kind of hard to see up on the screen. And for those of you who may have trouble seeing it on the screen, it's all on one page. It is in the conference materials and we'll have this calendar posted and sent out to pastors for posting. So to look ahead to, uh, before we look ahead to 2024, a couple of announcements that are still left in 2023. Our last uh, Mission Center gathering of this year are, are the Advent Activity Days. Um, that's a day that at all three campgrounds, uh, we have Advent activities, and it's a Saturday in December, Linda, Saturday, December 9th. So at all three campgrounds, everyone's invited to come on Saturday, December 9th. The time and specifics are in the Mission Center announcements. And then also for anyone who didn't hear yesterday, we had an announcement of a very generous uh, matching donation so any donations given to Blue Water Campground through this week will be matched up to $5,000. And we heard uh, after we announced that in the afternoon, we had already received $1,300 by the end of the day. So we've got $3,700 more dollars that could be received this week to be matched by a generous donor. That would total $10,000 for the campground and be a big help towards the operating deficit at Blue Water. So share that news uh, in your congregations this week. We'll be sending it out uh, through email and, and social media, and hope we can reach that $5,000 mark uh, this week for Blue Water. Looking ahead then to 2024, the calendar shows several items in italics, and I won't specifically address those necessarily. Those are either liturgical days or holidays that are on the worldwide calendar that we want to remember. Some of them fall on Sunday worship, some are other times. Everything else that's not in italics uh, is a mission center sponsored activity of some sort. So those are the ones we'll look at. In January, we have our council meeting. And then on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, the uh, Naming, Claiming, and Acting the Change team, which looks at diversity and inclusion, will be offering worship and learning as they have the past two years. So mark that day to join in. And uh, on January 21st, we'll have the first of online pastor meetings that I will offer. Moving into February, we have our winter retreat starting up. Uh, the first weekend is our camp directors and leaders retreat. So that's for those people in those roles. And the next weekend, we have two different retreats planned at this point. Uh, here at Blue Water Campground will be for junior high and senior high youth. And at Park of the Pines that weekend will be an open family retreat with a, a nature focus. Well, middle of the month is the beginning of Lent, and we often have different calendars and resources available through Community of Christ and other partner organizations that might help you look at uh, things like carbon or life choices or just the Lenten journey spiritually. And then moving into March, we have a family retreat planned at Blue Water the first weekend. Our combined campgrounds executive committee, that's the officers from all three boards, along with the mission center and field leaders that set overall policies. And we'll be continuing through the Lenten season until uh, Holy Week and the celebration yeah, of you get, you get it off, the thing off. In April, We've got our second Mission Center Council meeting 
Earth Day, and then a new event um, that we want to highlight is what we're calling Summer Camp Prep Day. Uh, so instead of planning a spring conference in Michigan at one site, we'd like to focus at all three of our campgrounds because they're all needing volunteers to come help with work, and we need staff for our summer camps. And we want to try to address both of those on the 27th. So we're planning that day uh, in the morning to have a uh, speaker or, or, or brief program to highlight the needs for youth camps and how to get involved with that. And all three campgrounds and likely a site in Southwest Michigan, uh, Kalamazoo or Grand Rapids area, will be connecting into that from those locations and hearing from the presenters and asking questions about the campgrounds and summer camps. And then we'll have a lunch at the, the site in the afternoon, we'll have various uh, volunteer projects around the campground at each site. So picking up sticks and cleaning windows and sweeping things out, setting up equipment, getting ready for summer uh, as a big concentrated effort on that one day at all three of our campgrounds. We'll also offer the youth worker training um, that would be needed to become a staff member for those who aren't yet youth workers and wouldn't want to do that. So that's the plan. We're hoping that'll be exciting. We'll get more out, of course, as we get closer to the date, but kind of a big rally day for summer camps, get people to their campground of their choice that day. Or again, we're going to try to have a Southwest Michigan site. That was a recommendation for people who can't travel that day, but can still get ready for camps uh, from the staffing perspective. In May, we'll have our second set of online pastor meetings, and then we'll have our springtime ministry conference, but this year it'll be in Kirtland, Ohio. We did this several years ago uh, before the pandemic and wanted to try it again. Kevin uh, and Lori White have agreed to lead this for us. They did it there before. Um, I've got a flyer here for those in person. We don't have it digital yet. It'll be out as soon as we can. So it's that May 17th, 18th, 19th weekend. Basic outline is to gather Friday night starting at 7 on the full day Saturday, and then Sunday morning, uh, there's a panel and worship. In the This is all in the Kirtland congregation. A few of the activities may be in the Kirtland Temple pending scheduling uh, with the visitor center. The only meal that's provided by the retreat is Saturday lunch. So all those who come will be responsible for their travel, their lodging, and um, Friday night dinner, Saturday breakfast, Saturday dinner, and Sunday um, breakfast and lunch. So a Saturday meal will be included, but the rest will be on the own of participants. At this point, we don't have any mass transportation, so everyone will be encouraged to think about carpooling or if you have a big enough group locally to get a, a van or, or bus even, if that makes sense. Registration is limited to 150 people, and we will keep it to Mission Michigan Mission Center only advertising uh, at least through the 1st of January, and then after that, we'll open up to any other um, mission centers in the field that might want to join us. So look for that registration pretty soon. Still a few details on guests and things being worked out, um, but save the date that weekend if you'd like to take a trip to Kirtland, Ohio. The end of May, we're going to be in our second year of nature retreats, another weekend where we'll have it at all three campgrounds, same time. These are more relaxed weekends. We usually, uh, what we did this year was plan a sort of a scavenger hunt outdoor activity for families in the morning, uh, a light lunch, some uh, nature specific activities in the afternoon, and then a guest presenter. And that's typically the format we plan to follow for that weekend. The rest of the weekend is just time to enjoy creation at the campgrounds. A new event on our list to start June is a, an overnight camp one night for youth kindergarten, first and second grades who aren't yet old enough for our traditional camping program. Uh, they would stay with their adult um, so we won't be staffing cabins like we normally do, but otherwise we'd try to have a sample of what youth camp looks like. So arrive, check in, have a probably a lunch meal, do activities, recreation, crafts throughout the day, dinner, uh, some kind of special activity at night, campfire, sleep in the cabins overnight, again, with the child's adult, um, wake up, breakfast, 
uh, maybe a few more things clean up and and head out. So there might be a few times where the, the youth are supervised by our staff and parents have a separate session to learn about camps and different things. But overall, the adult would stay with the child for this experience. So we're trying to just at Park of the Pines this coming year and then get our program ready and work that out. And hopefully we'll add this at all three campgrounds on different weekends in the future. Um, we may look at also opening this concept up to youth that might be older, but have uh, different needs that don't allow them to participate in a full traditional uh, week camp or want to come sample camp before they do that, because we do often hear about that need as well. But right now, it'll just be a pilot with a youth going into kindergarten, first, second grades. And then our summer camp schedule is the same as it was this year overall. The sequence and, and dates are, I think, all the same, just adjusted to the 24 dates. Um, I can share our family camp guests that are tentatively scheduled at Sanford Campground is Joey Williams, president of 70. At Blue Water will be Apostle Janae Grover. And at Park of the Pines will be Apostle Lachlan Mackay. And the uh, World Church leaders have released the reunion material guides on the theme is restoring the earth, a restoration imperative or healing the earth, a restoration imperative. So the theme is out with the daily focus points um, and we'll look for the worships and classes soon. We do have the last event in July to know is Youth Art Camp. That's a new camp that'll be in its third year. That's been a great addition. That, that does have a limited number of spaces due to the more technical aspect of it and, and detailed work there. So sign up for that one and particularly early. And a highlight, not a mission center event, but our delegation uh, goes to spec and we wanna continue to grow that in the middle of July 13th through the 20th. Looks like, I don't think our date got on here uh, for April for the uh, spec retreat. I don't think we've officially confirmed that. It's on our dates, but I need to update this before we email it out. So we're hoping the first weekend in April, uh, that'd be the 5th, 6th, 7th, will be a new uh, retreat for senior high only. Um, that will be for learning about spec. And we're going to hopefully open that up to Canada East as well and see if we can partner with that mission center. And it'll be at Blue Water Campground, so it'll work for both mission centers and have the facilities here um, to do the recreation parts of SPEC. Our only mission center event in August planned is the preliminary budget presentation. The falls on the first, the Thursday night, we usually share that. Again, the congregations be asked to consider their commitments. In September, we've got online pastor meetings again and the Mission Center Council at the end of the month, looking into the fall conference and senior leisure camp at Blue Water during the week. October then is deadlines to be determined for fall conference. Yesterday, the conference approved a resolution asking for the consideration of the conference to be scheduled at a central location that could house um, a larger group. And so staff will be looking at those options and seeing where to plan that. And depending on what facilities we can find, um, that'll set the date for conference. Traditionally, it's been the first weekend in November, but if that may need to change. And then the deadlines are set by policies. Legislation is 30 days before the, whatever the conference date is, and deadline for delegates is four weeks, 28 days, um, before the conference date once it's set. And then again, we'll be planning our Advent activities December 7th at all of our campgrounds. Um, one... A uh, holiday I'll note that got added to the calendar is June 20th, World Refugee Day. This was a day that uh, has been selected as a World Conference Resolution Day to 
highlight and focus on. So this is a new focus day for the church. Uh, it does match with the United Nations celebration of that day. Okay, let me take a break there and see if anybody has questions about anything on the calendar, any of the activities. Anyone online, you can now unmute yourself if you have a question. Yeah. Um, on the sending the leisure form coming through the 27, I assume you'll be sending out um, more details about that than when they can arrive and register it over there. Yes, yes. The registration usually for that comes out early summer. Um, your, your question about arrival time reminds me that a, a point that I tried to emphasize in my written report is arriving at camps when the start time is and leaving at the end time. We've had Consistently at all three of our campgrounds, people come before and want to stay later than those camps. And it really makes it difficult for our campground staff and the camp staff uh, to do what they need to do at the right times. So when we have people wanting to come out the campground just to look around, uh, they need to realize that it's generally reserved uh, for private events all throughout the summer. And so if you're, if you're not scheduled to be there in the summer, you can assume it's scheduled for a private event. In the off season, we're not always scheduled, but again, we can't have people coming at any time without notice. Our, our caretakers are certainly willing to accommodate anyone who, who calls in advance uh, to talk about what's available, but people arriving uh, or just staying before or after, it's, it's really difficult because planning has to be done to cut grass or do maintenance. When people aren't there, sometimes water has to be shut off, electricity, um, and if we have campers staying there, um, people, pets, all that, it just gets really complicated really fast. And so we want to make that a point of emphasis this year. And then for the camp directors themselves, you know, they have to stay until everyone's checked out. And so when people are lingering and lingering after family camp, it just makes it uh, a big drain after they've already given a whole lot of time and energy to their camps. We will try to highlight those start and end times and everyone who registers, get that information to them very clearly and appreciate your support in talking to anyone about that. And for people who want to bring trailers early, um, the family camps, that's a big uh, issue at all of our campgrounds. It generally can't be accommodated because of previous camps. And again, because mowing needs to be done, maintenance has to be done, and we don't wanna have the liability of tree falling or a power outage or vandalism, these things all happen uh, despite our wishes they wouldn't. And having those things there before or after is not something we want our staff to deal with on top of everything they already manage for us. All right, well, let's switch over then to specifically look at youth camps. Linda, am I missing something here? Did I get the full screen? Isn't 
Uh, it's, it's, it's yeah, it'll plug in. Yeah. All right, well, a focus for Mission Center staff over the past two years uh, has been in growing and enhancing our camping ministries program. Uh, we do this because number one, we see it as one of our primary tools for invitation and welcoming people uh, who are not yet connected with Community of Christ into the community. We also see it as a, a great tool for living out our enduring principles to actually be in community with one another and experience grace and generosity. And uh, practically speaking, we do it because the more we use our facilities that we already have, the better we can invest in them, sustain them, and hopefully improve them. So our goal has been to grow our numbers coming out of the pandemic, has kind of shifted all of us in different directions, uh, to greater participation in our camps and gatherings. And we've done that by using some of the funds from the sale of campgrounds that were set aside by the conference for camping and gathering ministries that focus on youth and young adults. And in dialogue with the Mission Center Council, the officers have uh, submitted a proposal to use up to $50,000 per year for four years, this is the second year of that, to fund a camping and gathering coordinator position that focuses solely on retreats, camps um, throughout the year. Uh, we've been successful last year and this year in adding uh, several new events to the calendar. So youth retreats, family retreats, nature weekends, art camp have all been added Advent days uh, because of that effort over the last two years. Next year, we want to switch our focus from adding more events, although we do have a, a couple of new ones, the K2 overnight and the spec retreat are being planned, uh, to taking the events we've added over the last two years and our traditional camps and growing them over the next two years while we have that uh, funding in place. Our hope is not to use all of that $50,000 each year, though we want to um, get to the point where we're raising more income through fundraisers, donations, and investment fund earnings to make that a sustainable uh, budget, even with that uh, salary position there in it. A uh, quick update, Jessica, you might have it faster than I do. Um, our youth camp numbers for this year, our goal for income, is $75,000 from donations, fundraisers, and investment earnings. Uh, our overall cost for camping uh, for the year will be a little bit more than $100,000. So that remaining $25,000 piece is what we expect to take from Camping and Gathering Ministries Fund. We could take up to $50,000, but we're hoping to reach the $75,000 in, in income so that we only need to take $25,000 this year. Through October, you had numbers, right? And I should note that our camping coordinator, Winnie Johnson, is not able to present today uh, because of illness this weekend. So she intended to be here to share all this. Just the income. So through the end of October, we had roughly $45,000 in income so far from donations and fundraisers. So our goal is 75,000. So we're hoping to reach 30,000 more in November and December. Uh, we did have a silent auction and a cinnamon roll fundraiser here this weekend. And we know there are still some congregations that have commitments um, that will be coming in and envelope uh, donations. We have Giving Tuesday, that will be a focus. So that's our goal. Again, our kind of baseline is to get to that about $50,000. We'll make it work if we use the full amount we have approved. So we're very close to that. But we'd like to meet that higher goal to show that we could sustain this without that um, sort of project-based funding. So that's what we'll lift up in communications uh, throughout November and December is that remaining $30,000 roughly that we'd like to earn this year. And that number you know, includes all of our expenses for camping. So the overnights that we pay to the campground, uh, food costs, which have certainly risen with inflation uh, over the past couple of years, our costs uh, for licensing our camps, our costs for uh, programs and materials and director training and background checking, all of those things that go into our overall youth camp.
program is in that roughly $100,000 expense total. I think it's doable. We've been doing it with the generosity model. We've been meeting our actual camp costs and that comes to overnights, food and program. Again, that uh, funding is in place for these four years, second year we're in now. I think we can get there. If we don't, we'll make adjustments to our, our staff position to fit what is sustainable based on our giving levels. So what you're seeing in front of you then is our uh, our visioning for our, our camping ministries program, specifically youth camps. Our long-term goal, and I shouldn't say that's forever, but our long-term goal at this point, so kind of the five-year plan, is 50 campers per camp. That's where we'd like to get at eventually with our camping ministries program. Now, these are pretty ambitious short-term goals. We may not hit them in three years, um, but the idea was to to increase by 10 campers per camp over the next few years. So this year, our camp numbers were roughly at 20 numbers, uh, 20 campers per camp. And if we were able to add 10 more per camp over the next three years, we could meet that goal over those short-term steps. Um, in order to do that, we need to invite more kids, we definitely need to have more staff, and we'll need to have more contributions financially. Yeah, so uh, Rich is one of our director, camp directors. He wanted to point out that these goals aren't really that ambitious. They would actually just be a return to our numbers prior to COVID. So Pre-COVID in 2019, we were roughly at 35, 40, I think, average per camp. And in years before that, somewhere around those numbers. So we had several camps at 50 and, and some more or less. So these numbers, based on previous history, are certainly attainable. In recent years, COVID you know, changed our whole program. We had two years without, so we're rebuilding that whole um, base of, of youth. So this is a stepping stone for us in our current context. So in order to meet those short-term goals, we've uh, lined up a couple of action steps that we think could help get us there. Uh, for 2024, we would challenge each congregation to send at least one youth to a camp. So have one youth go to a camp, junior, junior high or senior high, send at least one staff member to a camp and contribute financially to youth camp ministries as a congregation, either through a, a budget line item, a special offering, a fundraiser, however the congregation might do that. So again, we're looking at invitation, staff, and finances as the three areas we need. And these are three sort of challenges that we think would move us one step forward. In the following year, we increase that challenge from one camper overall to two campers, hopefully at two different camps. So maybe a junior camper the first year, a junior and a junior high the second year, and then send two staff members to camps and increase that contribution, uh, whatever it was, by 10%. And then in the third year, send at least one camper to all three age groups, junior, junior high, and senior high. Send three staff members and increase contribution to youth camps by another 10%. So some numbers to look at for this year to kind of base off of what that could look like and where we're at and, and see where the goal might take us. Uh, what's listed here is based on the registration data. So there were a few of these campers who registered that didn't attend, but we tracked this up front. So congregations you know, may have a youth that they registered that, that didn't show for some reason, but... Um, you can see the number of campers there for each camp, uh, the total for that age group. The first line is the number of campers that listed a Community of Christ congregation. And then the second is the number without a Community of Christ congregation listed. 
it doesn't mean they have never gone to a community of Christ congregation, or maybe they're even members are attached, but that's what they reported on their own registration. And then the total number of campers we had for each age group. Uh, underneath, uh, and on the far right column is Art Camp. So I've listed that so you can see, but I didn't include that in, our, in the totals from our traditional uh, camping numbers. And we do have these numbers going back to 2011 when the Mission Center first formed. And we look at this as we're considering our, our goals. At the very bottom is a line showing the number of congregations in Michigan that had one or more campers in that age group. And we have 65 congregations, had 65 congregations in Michigan this year that could have potentially listed youth. So as you can see, we've got quite a few congregations that could um, add a camper um, for next year. lost money. Um, just to break this out a little bit more, there were three congregations that sent a camper to all three age group camps. There were 15 congregations that sent a camper to two different age group camps and 20 congregations that had a, a camper registered for one camp. So in total, that's 38 congregations that had a camper registered for camp, which leaves us with 27 congregations that had no campers registered for camp. So we think if we can support you by coming to your congregations as you need, by providing flyers, postcards, um, answering your questions, uh, that we can grow our camping program through invitation by targeting congregations that are not yet inviting youth to camp. And we recognize that this is just one year snapshot, it's not to say just because a congregation didn't have a youth this year, they haven't. Um, but based off of this particular data, we could see how we could grow through those action steps that I just laid out. To where if we met that together in year three, going from three congregations that sent a youth to all of our camps to 60, we have a, a tremendous growth in, in our camper registrations. So again, the challenges we're gonna lay out and communicate uh, to pastors and leaders it, for next year would be to send at least one youth to a camp. We'd love to have every congregation connected with a youth who goes to camp, every congregation connected with a staff member who goes to camp, and to contribute some amount in some way as a congregation to youth camps. And here are the links to stay connected. The camping website is the main site for all the information, registration, donations, whatever you want to know about camps. Uh, Facebook page uh, you can follow on social media. And then the contact for Winnie, who again wasn't able to join us due to illness today. So let me take this down and open it up for questions on our camping programs, the, the mission we've talked about, and our, our goals we've laid out. If you're online, you are able to unmute. Anyone have any? Yeah. Oh, I'm regretting that I will do something like this because I have to go to the internet. Because I felt so flooded by John. But um, are these goals that you laid out uh, in a printed form? They are not yet, but they could be. Uh, but I could get the issue back to my congregation. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure that I could get someone to look it up online, especially our pastor who does all that stuff so well. But I would really like to have this information shared at the congregation as well. Sure. Yeah, so what I can do uh, is. 
we you generally recap conference and get that information to pastors and we'll make this one of the handouts so if you just make ask your pastor specifically to check their messages for this one good morning dan this is aretha i just wanted to share with you i think it was last year that we had one saturday um an adult and a child came and we had a uh, father and daughter attend up at the park and they had a marvelous time, just a marvelous time. And so it's well worth, I think, for your kindergarten one there. That's going to be exciting. I hope the parents take a good look at that and take advantage of it and break those little ones in right away. Thank you, Larissa. You're welcome. Good morning, Dan. It's Debbie Lahayeski. Um, do we have any information on how did those other children that aren't connected with a congregation, how did they get to camp? I mean, how, how did they know about it? How did they? Because I would imagine that most of them are connected to a community of Christ member. Yeah, we do collect in the registration how they heard about this. So we do have that uh, part that we could go back and they can check website, email, friend, that sort of thing. Um, many of them are connected through friendship or family or relationship, but they don't you know, consider themselves a member or, or part of that any congregation. Yeah, and then just we have we do have people who find it on social media or see a poster or flyer um, that have no personal connection at all and just find our camps. And Dan, I have a couple questions about um, um, what is it Giving Tuesday? But you know, whenever you come to that, I can add my comments. Yeah, we've got another comment here, and then we'll come back to you, Debbie. So I want to kind of add to what Debbie is asking um, in terms of like the art camp, um, that camp, it's a, it's a really nice entry entrance into camping where you're coming in, in the space of art, you're not coming in the space of church and what development or developed out of that too was Oh, they came in for our camp. Oh, guess what? We also have church camp. And there were some that ended up going to church camp because of that. And so that, um, if we can work on developing that in not just art, but when he's got some really great ideas, um, not to force it on people, but to say, you know, here, well, you're welcome in for art camp, but there are other opportunities as well that we have, um, that you can come and and check out as well, and so that is, um, I think, going to be something that we can keep working on and developing to um, make that a nice entrance into. We're really lovable people. Um, how about you check out these other options that we have that aren't, um, you know, our art camp is is all about art, but they see how we love on them. And then they want to see and check out more. And so I think in, in some ways that can be a way. I A few of those numbers, Debbie, um, are from that as well, from just, oh, you know, they came in from that and then, oh, they wanted to stay or wanted to see something else too. So just wanted to add that. Yeah, I mean, that framework Sarah is talking about is a shift for the institutional church from what used to be a model of you, be, uh, you believe first what the church has to say, you behave that way, and then if you do those, you belong in our community. To switch that entirely around, we try to reach out with belonging first, invite, include, welcome. Because you belong, you can start to behave because you see it lived out and modeled. And when you behave that way and belong, the beliefs come with that, you know, they're part of it. So just philosophically, that is a switch that faith communities are going through and we're trying to live that out with things like art camp and nature weekends and things that put our principles out there in a belonging way and they can see it before they have to ask those deeper questions. 
This is Erica. Um, I was invited to serve at uh, a, a staff at junior camp this last summer. Um, I have three kids of my own. Um, so you would think that would make me want to be at camp. Oh. I read it being on staff at camp. I watch my own kids all day, every day. Now I'm going to have to watch other people's kids. <laughs> but, and you know, there's a but. Um, of course, it turned out to be a marvelous week. Um, it wasn't just babysitting, of course. It was getting to know children, watching them develop, um, building relationships I didn't know I was capable of. Um, it's a joy, um, even though it is a little effort, especially on the front end. So I just wanted to share that with you as um, a person who's saying, I love your goals of um, encouraging people to be staff. We can have all the money and all the preparation, but without staff, camp literally cannot happen and won't happen. So I encourage you, even if you think you're not up for it, you are, and uh, other folks in your congregation are, I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> I'm proof you can do it. Um, I was kind of sort of begged into coming because junior camp is not my thing. My thing is junior high, I'm sorry, middle school, high school. That's that's my thing. Um, but I was talked to by two people about the fact that if I didn't say yes, there'd be no camp because they didn't have enough counselors. So I said yes, thinking Linda and I were going to be two counselors in the boys' cabin. Side because I was like, I'm not going to be a counselor in a boy's cabin, be the only female in there um, by myself. And then when I got there, there um, was already there, there, a guy finally got convinced to come because his grandchildren were coming. So he was going to be there. And then I was like, then I'm definitely not going in the boy's cabin. Sorry, <laughs> but I'll still stay. And then Kelly graciously offered to be another camp counselor. And the kids are amazing. They are beyond amazing. And as to your question about whether or not we, you know, how do kids know? I was the person involved in um, head check <laughs> and ear check and stuff. And uh, so I would ask or I'd get to see families bringing them in. Well, we heard about or, well, none of us are members, but my mom is. And so she told us about this camp. So we'd come. So there were, I'd say it was almost about half and half. It wasn't just all church kids. Yeah. And one thing we're going to try to share also is to think about serving beyond the traditional camp counselor for the week. I know some of you have that only image in your mind and think, I can't stay seven nights in a cabin with a bunch of kids. Um, and we do need people who can do that. And I think you can, even if you think you probably can't. But we also want to say, if you can come for half the week, we can probably make that work, right? It does. It's not ideal, but if, if that's what your vacation time allows and you can do half of the camp, we can figure that out. If, if you can come on the weekend to help clean up camp after the staff have been exhausted from the week, that would be a huge contribution to our camping programs. If you could come just on a check-in day to help guide parents around and welcome and keep a positive attitude, um, that could be a huge help. If you can come just during the day and help uh, do the dishes and help the cooks in the, in the dining hall, huge help throughout the week so that our other staff aren't as burnt out doing everything all week long. So think about what can you offer a day, a three days, a full week, and we can probably find a role for you at camp. So just to put that out. Yeah, or one overnight, right? Or if you want to be on call, right? Because sometimes a staff member gets sick or has an emergency. So if you're close enough and flexible enough to say, I'll get background checked, I'll get trained, I'll do the camp training, and I'll be on call for this campground or these camps to come in whenever we have a, a need just for the night. I just wanted to offer my skills as a nurse to be a camp nurse. And I told Rich already that, uh, that I would be available. My time is flexible. And so uh, I know, I know uh, it's, it's required, I think, to have a nurse on 
So let me know if you need me. Thank you very much. <laughs> I just want to make a comment about the value of that contribution. In another mission center last summer, we could find no one to volunteer. They had to hire, and it was something like $18,000 for the camping season. So uh, incredibly generous, incredibly generous. Not to know what you're worth, it's still going to have all the Yes, health officers are, are crucial. They are uh, really the one position that has to be filled for state regulations, uh, along with the director for the camp who's who's leading it. Um, the rest is you know up to us to staff appropriately, and we can manage how we want to. But um, health officer and director are the two state requirements, and then enough staff per children of each age. But again, if you and if you want to become a health officer, you don't have to have full nurse credentials. That's our preference, and we appreciate that very much. There are courses to get the training needed uh, to become a camp health officer, and we have paid for some mission center members to get that training um, so that they can be available. The same would go with lifeguards. We don't currently have water at Sanford, but hope to have it by 2026. Um, but at Blue Water and Park of the Pines, we do still have open water and we need lifeguards in order to use it. So anyone who is a lifeguard or willing to become one, can we can use our disciple development funds to pay for the lifeguard course and training and get you ready for, for coming to camp. Any other camp questions, ideas? Dan, yeah. yes. could you show the schedule again for camping? We'll pull that up. There was a question, Debbie, did you have about Giving Tuesday? Yes, so we hear about Giving Tuesday, about World Church needing money, the campgrounds needing money, um, the camping program needing money, um, each congregation needing money. I was wondering where the focus should be or if it is um, all over the place and that's your choice. Yeah, it's definitely your choice uh, to direct your generosity. You know, our scripture encourages us to give equally to local and worldwide ministries. So that may be a consideration for you. Um, local, in that sense, is determined to be both congregation and mission center needs. So local congregation projects and mission center needs. And then the worldwide need uh, is for still this year, uh, well, every year is for worldwide mission ties is the first priority to fund the annual cost of the church. Anyone who has extra uh, gifts are asked to consider gifts to Bridge of Hope for the worldwide focus. So that if you want to give equally on the worldwide side, the priority is worldwide mission ties. On the local side, I, I can't speak to each congregation, but from a mission center, uh, our priority is our youth camp ministries, the mission center budget itself, and then the three campgrounds, which the greatest need this year is for Blue Water Campground. Okay, we have a video to play that summarizes last year's camping season, and then we'll go into communication. So Linda's going to take it from here. 
Good morning. I'm going to let it go that that was not a very good morning because it's a smaller group today. Good morning. That was, that was much better. That's the energy we want. Um, oh gosh, I'm sorry. I downloaded this and now I can't remember what, where I put it. so much fun putting that together because every year I get to ask the directors or Winnie asks the directors send me like three pictures from your camp and usually I'll have one or two directors that are like well I couldn't just pick three so here's 10 of my favorites <laughs> you you decide what one looks best uh and and so that's really fun and as I was putting it together I just kind of thought to myself man we had a really fun summer it was neat to look back at the pictures of all the kids and all the different locations and camps and just kind of have the opportunity to um, look back on how much fun all the directors made. So I'm gonna share my screen because we're gonna look at what will be our new Mission Center website. That looks pretty good. All right, good. So the website that we have right now, we've had for about 10 years. 
which in technology terms is ancient. It's time for her to retire and move into a really nice senior assisted living facility. And, and that's where she's gonna stay. So the new kind of trend uh, for websites is just to generally have less. If you're to go to our current website, when you go there and if you click along the top bar, in, uh, it's called a mega menu for a reason, it's mega. Tons of links are gonna drop down and it's like every piece of information you could ever want. People don't really use websites like they used to. The world has changed a lot in 10 years, right? Um, so the website is a little bit different and it's gonna be more current with what people are kind of typically going to a website for. So uh, we really wanted to focus our website on invitation. We wanted people to be able to look up, you know, a progressive church in Michigan, a progressive church in Michigan, come to the Community of Christ Michigan Mission Center website and learn about us, find out where to find us, how to find us, what do we do, what do we think, what does our church look, look like? Um, so you'll notice this new website's a little bit more focused on visitors than our other one was, and we desperately need visitors and new people. So I think this will be a good invitation tool. Um, let me make you guys smaller so I can see there. So uh, we'll kind of go through what the website looks like, and then we'll have some time for questions, but also, you know, I don't mind if you interrupt me, so feel free to just uh, unmute or yell out a question, or if I was unclear, just interrupt me. Uh, a trend that you see on websites now is this kind of rotating carousel across the top where you can see the tabernacle here at Blue Water. Uh, this is from the disc golf tournament last year where we had like 75% of the participants we're not Community of Christ members. Lots of people from the local Croswell and Lexington kind of thumb area community, which is exciting. So uh, people will see that and some other uh, of our pictures when they land. Over here is a little arrow that you won't probably be able to see in this view, but you can kind of shuffle through what will be in the carousel there at the top. The stuff that's here is just kind of a placeholder. Uh, eventually this might say, youth camp registrations are now open. That would be the first thing that you see when you log in. It might say family camps are coming up. Uh, what's in the carousel at the top will change all the time with a link here. You can see this little blue bar at the top can be changed to, right now it says fall conference. I think if you were to click whatever it is that says register now, it doesn't really go anywhere. It's just a placeholder because this website's not live. But when you come right to the website, it'll immediately grab your attention with what we're doing right now. This is similar to what's on the World Church's website. A new trend in websites is that you kind of scroll down like eternally, eternally. This is kind of the trend of the way websites work now. And so we have this all uh, essentially on the same page. And when you're clicking links in a way, it's just clicking you <laughs> up and down through the same page. So people will be more used to the way this looks like. This is what most of you will be interested in, will be in these, is it six? Six boxes here. If I were to click on upcoming events, it will show us our upcoming events. Here's going to be a, our calendar. You'll be able to view the month, weekday, uh, and also a list, which I think will be really helpful for congregation planning when you just want to go in and see what's coming up the next few months. Copy it, drop it in your bulletin. You'll be able to view the list of events once Dan or I have entered them in there. And uh, there's nothing really else in there right now because it's not connected to our calendar. Linda? But Linda, this is Larissa. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if the white print should not be black. On that green, I cannot see it really, really plain. The, if the white background should be black, is that what you said? The print. Oh, because it's gray. This part where it's gray or the... This yeah, part. right. Fall Mission Center Conference. I okay. think if it's in black, it'd be more bold. Okay. I appreciate that. Uh, it looks kind of blue on this screen, but I think yeah, it's uh, more green on my laptop. So I will look at that. Yeah, yeah well, we can look at that for sure. That's an easy change. Thank you. Yeah. And I have gotten feedback before from people with uh, vision issues that it can be hard to have gray on white as well. So we can make some changes to make sure that's accessible. Yeah. yeah. Oh, are you talking about where the box is highlighted? It looks so different on your screen from my screen. <laughs> I'm like, what are we talking about? Box down on the left. 
Yeah, okay. Okay, mm -hmm. but underneath it, it looks like there's yellow print. And it's really mm -hmm. hard for some people like me to see yellow. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a screen share is making it look a little worse. But keep telling me because there's going to be a couple of other spots that we're going to have things like that, maybe. So you'd be able to scroll here. You'll be able to look at the month, a quick list. Like I said, nothing else is really in here right now. But you'd be able to click on this event and it would have links to like the registration information. If there's a Facebook event that goes with it, that kind of thing will be there. Uh, let's see. The newsletter, if I were to click this, is going to take us to sign up for the newsletter. We may also have past editions of the newsletter available here. If you missed the email, you can go back and look for it. Or I know I saw that a couple weeks ago in the newsletter. What week was that? People like to have those available. So those will be right, easy to find. Youth Ministries is going to take you right to the Michigan Youth Camps page. So that'll be right at the top for you. You should now be finding the youth camp registrations and all that is concentrated on the youth camps website, but it'll be easier to find now on the new website as well. These I don't think are linked yet. These two don't have links, but uh, eventually online ministries will take you to uh, opportunities that are available in the Michigan Mission Center that meet online or hybrid. So even congregations who have a hybrid stream, that information would be available under online ministries. And our new expressions link, yeah, it doesn't go anywhere right now. Will Sunday Night Live be on? I don't know what Sunday Night Live is. That is that the ministry that's provided by IHQ, the online chat with a minister. Did Richard Hawks used to do that? Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure if we would link that or not. It's an IHQ ministry. Right now we do have a link that goes to because the World Church also has a, a pretty good list uh, from around the US of who has online gatherings. Um, we have a link to that on our current website, so we could link to that too. Yeah. <laughs> How do I become a staff member for youth camps? I don't think we have that. And we go back to the Michigan Youth Camp site. Let's see. So if we click the volunteer link, it would say here a little bit about what are some of the requirements and connect you to Winnie's email. If you have suggestions of more stuff that we could put on there, let me know. Did you say no? <laughs> oh, no. Please help. Please help with you camps. Um, <clears throat> well, when I was a kid, it was Friday Friday nights. What was it called, Bobby Ann and Dean? We had a Friday nights. What was that called? Do you remember that? It was fun. All right. If we keep scrolling past these little six boxes where you'll find most of what you'll need going forward, you're going to see now that we're talking more to visitors as we keep kind of scrolling past. So this is going to, uh, we're not going to sit and read it because it's just not going to, we don't have the time for that, but it's going to talk to them a little bit about what community of Christ in the Michigan Mission Center has to offer. Who are we? What is our personality like? Um, two things that pop up here whoops, on our website are things that visitors are really going to be looking for. One is we want to be really clear about our scriptural interpretation. We don't have a literal <laughs> We don't use a literal understanding of the Bible. When we're clear about that and upfront, it tells them lots of other things about what we think and what we believe. So we want to have that right there. We're letting them know what they're looking for and that we are fully egalitarian and this mission center is LGBTQ inclusive. When I say egalitarian, uh, that means that we ordain women or that women have equal rights in our denomination as men to serve in any office. So we want to be upfront. Who are we? Why would someone want to come to our church? Scrolling down farther, it's gonna, this also doesn't go anywhere right now, but it will. Uh, these numbers will get updated. What, what is a mission center? That doesn't really mean anything outside of community of Christ. Uh, so our mission center is, it'll by the end of the year, it'll be 63 uh, brick and mortar congregations, three campgrounds, uh, five plus emerging congregations. That's not the right wording. We'll fix that. I should say new expressions. And uh, a glimpse at how many people in Michigan are members. What is our membership even like? It's just giving them a little bit of idea of who we are. 
to come down here further, they'll be able to more specifically figure out what kind of a community they might want to connect with. Maybe they're really looking for an in-person experience. This would take them to the brick and mortar congregations. Same thing, looking for an online gathering or to uh, experience camping. This is a way that a lot of people enter into Community of Christ is through our pretty expansive camping program. So they'd be able to get all that information right here. Now on the World Church website, their version of finding a church is a pain in the butt. Uh -huh. When you put on that one, will it actually give you a list? We'll look at the how to find a congregation in a second. And then tell me what you think, because it's a little bit different than how AHQ has it. Thank you, Danny. If we scroll down a little farther, this is always going to be updated, the recent blog posts. So pretty much uh, Dan or I put in information about events or happenings. Whatever's newest is going to appear in the bottom. It will depend on what page you're on, because let's say you go to uh, the camping page. What's going to show up in the bottom is going to be upcoming camping events. So whatever link you click on, the website's going to show you what's related to that topic that's newest. We use tags, right, to sort the events. So it'll be a little bit more relevant as you click around instead of just being sort of random. Down here at the bottom, some of our uh, websites and organizations that we partner with. So you'd be able to click on this church updates link and find the most up-to-date stuff that's been posted by other folks in the Mission Center. Uh, these link to websites for each of the campgrounds. Uh, to the World Church's website, and then to our the Harmony website as well. Down here too, folks have an opportunity to just, this exists on our current website as well, connect to us directly. This doesn't get used a lot, really. I hope with the more invitational form of this website that we'll get more requests, but periodically we'll get an email that's like, hey, I live in the Flint area. This is really what I'm looking for. Can you connect me to somebody? That goes right to a minister and we hook them up. I'm calling Dorothy. Hey, got somebody who's in Flint. You wanna take them out to lunch after? So they're really getting connected with a person as soon as we can get them connected. Okay, let's look at how to view our list. So along the top, we have about, who we are will link you right to the church's website. There's really not any wasted space on our website about what community of Christ is as a denomination because all of that already exists on the church's website. So it gives a glimpse and then it's gonna direct them right to the seaofchrist.org where it's a little more consistent. This is a picture of, I think, Waterford. Um, so this will talk about the difference between a new expression and a traditional brick and mortar congregation. It's not for the purpose of putting groups in boxes because sometimes people get worked up about that. Yeah, we're a brick and mortar congregation, but we're also hybrid. You're gonna show up in multiple places. It's not about pigeonholing people, it's about giving people options of ways to connect with you. So they'll learn about the new expressions. This list is wildly out of, out of date. I will update it at some point. But this would list the new expressions as well as a little bit about them. So it would say faith connections. We meet in Flint. To, I'm just picking on you, Dorothy, because you're in my eye line. <laughs> you want me to pick on somebody else? Uh, it would say faith connections. We meet in Flint the first and third Sunday of the month. It's from 5 to 6.30. We have a dinner. You don't need to bring anything. We cover the lectionary script or just real simple stuff that people would want to know. What would even make me want to go here? Um, and then it would link to, say, Dorothy's email or Faith Connections email. So they have the opportunity to connect with the person right mm -hmm. away. Make sure it's a good fit for them. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, those would show up under, uh oh, my computer's battery is getting low. Uh, those would show up a little bit lower here under find a congregation mm -hmm. near you. The New expressions will probably continue to have BWC and Beyond the Horizon because they started as new expressions and the format is so different, but it would still show up in both places under a congregation and under a new expression. So it's more ways for them to find you, not putting you in smaller boxes. Thanks, Dan. Linda, this is Dottie. Who is it? This is Dottie Babbage. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm going back just a little bit where you had the squares that said the campgrounds and the World Church in Harmony. Do we have something for seekers? Something for the Latter-day Seekers? Is that what yes. you mean? Yes. 
Um, we don't have really a direct link to that. Um, there's no reason that we couldn't add something there specifically for people who are coming to our tradition from another Latter-day tradition. That could be a good idea. We don't have, um, we have ministers who are experienced with that, but we don't have like a set ministry in Michigan for people who are coming from other Latter-day traditions. So it would probably be more like connecting them to Donnie and other folks who have done uh, work with seekers. So that's a good okay. idea, Donnie. Okay. Thank you. No, thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate that. In case you couldn't hear Donnie online, she was saying that that would be really great because in their experience in Utah, particularly in Salt Lake City, it, they experience a lot of growth from welcoming seekers. So we'll make sure that we get that added on there. Um, so uh, you can type in your city or your zip code if you were looking for a congregation near you, uh, and it, it will bring it up uh, in a list. You could also just kind of scroll through and see what congregations are here as well, and it's like integrated with Google, so it would bring up directions uh, for folks. So we'll see. Let's say I live in Lexington. <laughs> It might not, I'm not sure if this part's live or not. We'll see. Look at that, it's live. So if I type in that I'm uh, in Lexington and I'm looking for a congregation, it's gonna bring up Croswell. It's gonna bring up the Blue Water Congregation. Like you said, Rich, I don't really live here, but they meet here. So that's where uh, the, the target audience that would pull uh, Wadhams Grove, Sandusky. Although it looks like we have Valley Center on here. So <laughs> can you tell I used an old list? <laughs> we'll clean that up before it goes live. Uh, but yeah, that's how they would find, uh, that's how they would find congregations. Questions or other suggestions? Is that better? Oh. Good. All right, good. My The bar was low because all of you don't like the new church's website, but I just said to myself, if they complain less than that, then I won. <laughs> Uh, all right, so under news, this again is a, a portion of the website that would change based on what we're doing. Um, we do have financial reports at the top because um, from an invitation perspective, um, a lot of people are coming to our church and they're surprised how transparent we are uh, with our members about our financial situation and that we let people vote about our financial situation that any member can serve as a delegate. So we wanna really lift up that transparency uh, as an invitation tool for people to really kind of figure out who we are. And I think our financial reports, they're not interesting to me, but they, they do tell our story. It tells us what's important, where we're putting our money is what we're doing. So putting those at the top will be um, good transparency for folks as well. Any other questions on that stuff? Yeah. For the congregation pages, mm -hmm. uh, is there a spot to put like the, the schedule, like what time they worship, uh, coffee hour, and any events that they have in the space for them? There's not on this website. This one, because it's just integrated basically with Google Maps, it's just meeting like a spreadsheet of our addresses. Um, on the World Church's website, there is an opportunity for that. You can upload a picture of your congregation, your meeting times, who the pastor is, that kind of stuff. Yeah, on the website. On the church's new website. On the World Church website. Yes, on the World Church website, there is. Yeah. It's not very clear though, let's update that. Uh, I know I have just noticed my home congregation yeah. was wildly out of date. Uh, so I figured it out. I think mm -hmm. I did an email someone. Yeah, so there's it, yeah, it isn't. And I'll bring that up too, in case other congregations are also listening. The the church's website, if you're to go to, I think it's find a congregation is the name of the tab. You can put in put in the zip code for your congregation and just look and see. Is the pastor correct? Is the CFO correct? Um, is your website still correct? Phone numbers, maybe your congregation doesn't even have a phone number anymore and it actually needs to be the pastor's home number. Um, when you click through that and you find your congregation, it's like at the bottom or off to the side, it's something like update your info. You fill out an online woofoo form that gets emailed to Becca Loving and then she has to put it in manually and then she will email you when it's been updated. So you will get a confirmation that it's been updated, but it's 
if you haven't done it in a while, it probably hasn't been done. <laughs> so a good time to check. Other things, suggestions, or spots on the website that you want to look at? I'm not sure if this donate page is live. Let me see. Oh. Good. So uh, the last thing that we'll look at quick is the, uh, this is basically copied over from the existing website, but somebody was asking me earlier um, about info on where to mail a check if you needed to send Jessica a physical check, or even as a congregation, if you have papers, you need to send Jessica. Uh, all that info is going to be found under the donate page. And if you look down here, uh, we have a PO box where you can reach Jessica with checks and paperwork and other things that she might need to receive. You will still have, even though I don't think it's on here, we will still have, still have the integration with our online PayPal option, right, Dan? That will still appear up here here. So what you can give online through the current PayPal, that will still appear here at the bottom. That hasn't come over yet, but it will be there when it goes live. Questions? Things that you really want to see? Also up here, you can't tell is actually an image where I highlighted with the Community of Christ logo, the Michigan Mission Center logo, but it's white. So we have to fix the background code so that when the background is white, the picture will be black. So that will get that will get updated too, but you can click there to go back. Was there hey, Linda? Yeah. Is there going to be a link to the youth page for the youth to be able to, to, to get to that easily? Was that, is there a link to the youth camping information? Not the youth camping, but they had a youth page that they could get to from the old mission center website. Um, right now, thought, unless that's been taken down. I'm sorry. Can you say that part again, Cheryl? I said, that unless that part has been taken down, there used to be a link to, um, to the mission center youth page that was aimed at the youth directly. Yeah, on the current mission on the current mission center website, there is like a, a youth ministries link that leads to like a landing page that has info about Little Fish, our online uh, youth gathering for elementary age kids, and information about sanctuary, um, the online ministry for high school kids. Honestly, beyond those things and youth camps, which should all be on the Michigan uh, Michigan Youth Camps website, there's not a lot of other information available. So. That's a good question, Cheryl. I will think about where would be the best place to put the info about Little Fish in Sanctuary. Otherwise, everything else would pretty much be under Youth Ministries. Just so, my, I guess my concern is that it may be logical for us adults to go to a Youth Ministries page to find stuff, but if, a, say, a senior high kid is looking for something because they they met somebody at school, is there an easy way for them to find information about what youth activities might be in their area or who to contact in their area to, to connect with somebody from church? Let me when think we were at Spencer, we had a lot of kids that showed up that had no connection with the church but it was because they had seen somebody in their school that they would get in contact to to come to you to venture. So I'm just thinking if it's on the website, then uh, you know maybe upcoming youth youth activities as well as camps and stuff, then that might be something that the youth themselves are able to access. Yeah, I think I understand a little better what you're saying, Cheryl. Thank you. The Again, the upcoming events will be way at the bottom if they were looking for like an upcoming youth activity here. We do also have social media for all of our youth activities that they can share, share with each other um, that way as well, separate from this. I will look and see what some of the other mission centers and churches have as far as like a landing page for um, youth ministries. Um, yeah, because they're our senior highs specifically are a lot more tech savvy than we are. <laughs> are they are not really interested in our our website? <laughs> so I have to think about 
what it, what, where we would send them and what that would look like um, on here. Look, it's a good question. Let me give it some more thought and maybe talk with our, some of our youth camp directors too about what we think people, the kids would be looking for. Thanks for that question, Cheryl. I appreciate it. Go ahead, Rich. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we let's talk about it because if you have a question, other people probably do too. So right now we're there. Blue Water Campground is doing a, a matching thing, right? So we have a few more days to raise X amount of money for the match. So if you were to go to the Blue Water website, there's a donate tab on the Blue Water Campground website where you could see all the options, how they could give um, through PayPal or by sending a check to Jessica. So all that would be on the Youth Camps website, or not the Youth Camps, the Blue Water website. But I will also get you some language, probably not today, <laughs> probably tomorrow. I will get some language distributed too so that you can copy it. But all the links that you would need to share that info should be on the Blue Water's website. Yeah. Okay, I put it in the back because I wasn't sure if you wanted it out or Dan has it. Online people. Yeah, so um, in person, we'll get out the PayPal QR code, but we can get that distributed to through Mission Center Communications for that. Thanks. Other questions or things specifically that you want to see on the website? Yeah. Um, I think it looks wonderful, not really my thing, but what help is available to the congregation to have an outdated website? We recently, at our congregation, updated on it. What help is available to the congregation to do something like this for, their, for the website? Website? Yeah, so website development. Yeah, website development is unfortunately expensive. Uh, and if you don't already, it sounds like your congregation does, but if you don't already have a website, um, IHQ has on their website some information on things that you would really need to have uh, and how to host. So we could certainly share those links. We hired uh, someone who is a church member that has um a communications business that that does this called Cottonwood Consulting, uh, and that person designed this website. I can help you a little bit with some of the back end, like updating things, or if you needed to say train a new person, those would be things I can help you with. But website stuff, I really would recommend hiring someone if it's financially possible for your congregation, if you don't already have a website. But when it comes to like Instagram and Facebook, um, things like that, I'm, that's my job and I'm here to help you. So I would be more than happy to train anybody on what the scheduling software is like, how to use Instagram or Facebook. Uh, what are some of the trends and what are people looking for? Yeah, just shoot me an email and I would love to help you guys. There's some other congregations I've worked with as well. Um, one of the challenges is making sure that you have someone in your congregation who has enough knowledge about social media that they can kind of keep it going. It's best if it's someone who checks their notifications regularly, because then otherwise you're going to miss things. One of the things that Facebook does is it like times your response time, especially to messages. So if a visitor came to your Facebook and they want to message you, hey, what time does Faith Connections meet? and it's a page, it'll say usually responds to messages within two days or one hour. So it's best if you choose someone who can kind of real time be interacting with people. But yeah, I, I would love to train whoever wants to be trained on um, social media. I think in general, we're going to find that young people are, are going to find us on social media before they find us on a regular website. Yeah. And isn't there like an app that you can kind of update? multiple social media platforms. Yeah. yeah, there are um, a few different um, websites that you can use and apps that you can use that will actually post to multiple social media sites at once. So don't tell anybody else. But when it looks like I'm posting on the Mission Center website like every day and it looks like I'm out there crushing it at 8 a.m. all the time, I posted those like two weeks ago and I told the computer what time I wanted it to go and then I wanted to go to Instagram and Facebook and the Facebook group. Um, Meta that owns Facebook and Instagram has its own, I'm going to take this down so we can see each other. Um, they have their own scheduler that's free and is actually pretty good. Um, and I'd be happy to show anybody how to use those schedulers. 
I think you use later.com, right? That was what I was using before. We have a few congregations and ministries that use later.com. It's free and it's really easy to use. That might be what I sent someone else up with. Yeah, good question. Other thoughts or suggestions too? Looking forward to hearing what other things you think might be missing from the website or things that you think should look a little different. And you can always shoot me an email afterwards too, if you want. Anything else? All right, thank you very much. You'll all get an email and lots of communications when the website's in its final form. And then we'll have a couple of live sessions uh, with myself and with our web developer walking through the website in more detail in its final form. And we can take some last minute suggestions then too. So we'll get those dates to you. All right, I'll give it back to Dan. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone. We're gonna pause the um, Zoom session. We'll do some talking here about cleanup on site, but the worship uh, is scheduled to begin at 11. So you can stay on, the meeting will stay open. Um, we're just not gonna be showing anything for the next 30 minutes. Right. And we'll see you for worship at 11. <laughs>